Welcome to the space beyond right and wrong. And for the upcoming video, that sentence has even more meaning. Today, I will introduce you to two effective communication techniques to keep even a difficult dialogue open, as well as solution-oriented, and to give clear and constructive feedback. Let us quickly look into why we often communicate the way we do. In our Western culture, we are socialized in the belief that there's one truth. But is it? Are you sure? The French philosopher Rousseau was of different opinion. There are always four sides to a story. Your side, their side, the truth, and what really happened. Sounds a bit truer to me. In systemic consulting, you find a matching concept to utilize different opinions and perspectives to the benefit of all. It is called tetralemma and derived from Indian philosophy. Instead of fighting for either or, so respectively who is right or wrong, you consider basically four positions. First one is either, which might be your position. Second one is or, which might be the other person's position. The third one is as well as, which is the combination of both positions. And the fourth position is none of the two positions, but something totally new. There are a lot of ways to oscillate from position one, which is either, and position two, which is or, or to position three, as well as. Just a few examples how this could be done. Iteration, detect pseudo differences, generate more than the sum of its parts, introduce systematic ambiguity, and so on. Suffice to say that instead of getting stuck who is right or wrong, all parties move forward in a mutually beneficial way. What I regularly observe in companies is we often argue within the context of abstract words. To give you an example, this could be words like strategy or vision or more value-based terms like solidarity or loyalty. Your definition of loyalty might significantly differ from mine. Are you right and I'm wrong or am I right and you are wrong? And where, most importantly, does that lead us? We get stuck and worst case, our relationship is harmed. It would be better for both of us to see the perspective and opinion of the other person as an enrichment. I experienced that in dozens of workshops and would like to give you another example. In strategy workshops, when a team gets stuck, they usually debate and argue endlessly about specific topics. And then I ask each person a very easy and simple question. Please tell me what strategy means for you. How do you define strategy? And guess what? Ask 10 people and you usually get 10 definitions. Ask yourself, is it possible to agree on specific topics if people do speak 10 different languages? So let us dive into two pragmatic, easy to learn communication techniques to get the boat moving again. As simple and as easy they are, it takes deliberate practice to integrate them in your communication style, as old communication patterns are usually very strong. The first one is called systemic yes. If someone expresses a differing opinion, you refrain from saying the word no. No shuts down the dialogue and both or all of you get stuck. And even if you're not aware of it, on a neurological and involuntary level, it will. Instead, you say yes. Not to the other's opinion, but there are a lot of yeses you can communicate. Like, yes, I'm hearing what you say. Yes, I can see your position. Yes, I would like to learn more about the assumptions leading to your opinion, and so on. And then you replace no with an and. And it is important for me to consider. And I would like to draw your attention to an additional aspect. And I see additional topics to be considered, and so on. You keep the dialogue open and solution-oriented and jointly approach a solution. The second one is called non-violent communication. 
and has proven particularly beneficial in communicating feedback and dissolving conflicts. I will illustrate the four-step process of nonviolent communication with an easy, real-life example. Let us assume you set up a meeting with six participants and one comes 15 minutes late. The other five participants, including you, are already waiting and going a bit off and angry. When Johnny come lately finally arrives, one of you might say, gosh, you're always late. This is not only attacking the person instead of his behavior, but also most probably not changing his behavior. With nonviolent communication, you go a different route in four steps. The first one is to describe the situation as objective and fact-based as possible. So the first sentence could be something like, we did set up our meeting for nine o'clock a week ago and you accepted the invitation. Now it is 9.15 and all the five of us are waiting since 15 minutes for you. Obviously, you just described what happened and you also refrain from saying you had to wait because you didn't. It was your choice. Then you describe your feelings towards that behavior as for example, and this makes me go off or I get angry and so on. In the business context, this step is optional. Some people do not like to express their feelings. However, if you feel okay with it, I recommend to tell the other person. We are not robots, we are humans. In a third step, you explain to Johnny come lately which of your values have been violated by this behavior. So for example, this could be, it is important for me that we use our time effectively and efficiently. Or, it is important to me to respect that each of us has a huge workload, and so on. And now comes what all that leads to. You phrase in step four a question in which you specifically and precisely ask for the behavior or action you would like to see. In this case, it could be something of the likes, and I would like to ask you if in our next meeting you can ensure to be on time. Johnny come lately might say yes, but consider to also get a no. As for example, well, I do have problems to ensure this as I have a meeting each Monday prior to our meeting at 8.30, which might take longer. And now you have a dialogue like, okay, we can understand that. Would it be helpful to shift our Monday meeting to 9.30? Can you then ensure to be on time? Would that be possible for all the other participants? And so on. The relationship thereby stays intact and you most probably find a solution in a few minutes. What I have observed over and over in companies is three reactions when people should address difficult topics and maybe foresee a possible conflict. All three behaviors are detrimental to the organization. The first one is to put the topic under the carpet and wait until it explodes. The second one is a passive aggressive behavior like, so what, then I will also come late next time. But as Paul Watzlawick said once, you cannot not communicate. And the third one is to enter into a conflict, argue and harm the relationship. The good news is, this is in most cases simply a lack of communication skills. So try the two techniques for yourself and be in awe of what happens and how easy you will dissolve conflicts. Don't believe anything I say. Try it for yourself and practice the art of possibility.